When people see our photography, some find it very interesting, some find it just ugly and shameful, uh, but we find that there is beauty in the decay. I'm not really overly concerned about what people think about my work. I'm not afraid to tell just a really weird story. I know that I truly adore painting women. I love playing with nudes. I love the body and the contours and just women who feel sexy and confident. <laughs> I'm Matt. And I'm Sean. Together we're two members of the DK Photo Group, Urban Decay Photographers. What we're doing here today is exploring an abandoned brick factory built in 1889. It was in operation until 1989. We've been here before many times, uh, but the entrances are always changing. It's a bit of a cat and mouse game with the owners. Uh, this entrance was sealed up a little while ago, and now it's partially open, and the entrances that we used to use are now sealed, so this one will do. Even though urban exploration is technically illegal because we are trespassing in these buildings, there still remains an ethic in the community that we don't damage the buildings, we don't break into the buildings, and we use the Sierra Club model of take only photographs and leave only footprints. Uh, and if possible, don't leave footprints because security can follow you. <laughs> when you first enter a building, it's just an incredible experience. Even though these places were quite heavily used by a lot of people, oftentimes they haven't been seen in a number of years. And uh, you're seeing them in a state that no one has seen before. You never know what you'll find. A great example of that is in an old uh, carbide plant that Sean and I were in. We actually came across an entire overturned school bus sitting on its side in the middle of a building. What is that doing there? This type of photography takes us to any number of uh, formerly prosperous parts of the country, um, Detroit or Buffalo or what's commonly referred to as the Rust Belt cities. I went to university and I have a degree in urban planning uh, and that greatly influences my choice of photography styles. I have great respect for these towns that have suffered significant economic declines. And we try and document these spaces and hope for future prosperity that will come to these cities once again. One of the other things that we like doing when we come in these old industrial places uh, is trying to figure out how the process worked uh, you know, what machinery did what. Uh, in this room that we're in now, this is where they would form the bricks. The clay would come in uh, into these large surge bins here and would come out as a formed brick and then head off for firing in the next room. Straight ahead, you can see the old brick kilns. They uh, are about 150 feet long. And you can see the old uh, yellow pipes that uh, carry the gas for the uh, furnaces. Um, and they just uh, are uh, tunnels of nothing now. Tell me about this place. Uh, I really don't know that much about it. Well, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> These here are the cooling kilns. After the bricks were fired, they would be put in here to cool off before shipped out on rail to build the early parts of the city. As you can see, there's a great amount of graffiti, which I'm not a great fan of, but it's a type of art in itself, so you've got to work with it because that's uh, part of this community. What's great about this place as a photographer is the, uh, is the light is always changing in here. Um, so you've got constant challenges, uh, constant changing shots on a, on a regular basis. You can come in here uh, three different times and, and get uh, three different shots of almost the same thing. Again, you're mainly working with the darkness and with the light. I tend to like to work mostly with the darkness and try to bring the light out of it, where uh, I think the majority of photographers do like uh, finding the light and, and, uh, and working with that. I tend to work the opposite. 
when people think of abandoned buildings and urban decay, they think uh, ugly, um, they think uh, an eyesore, uh, they don't think that there'd be any uh, or much beauty in, in the decay and uh, we try and capture that and, uh, uh, and present it in an artistic and beautiful way. So right now I'm setting up for a shot uh, to try to incorporate this pipe. It's not too hard to find the beauty as, as far as I'm concerned anyway. What I love about this place is that everywhere you look, it's a great shot. Um, I mean, there's just so many details, so many interesting features. I mean, it is straight out of a post-apocalyptic movie or video game or something like that. It's just wonderful. I mean, the set designer would have to do nothing for this place to, to get it <laughs> looking like it does. One of my favorite recent experiences was uh, in Paris on my honeymoon. Uh, I was able to get permission from my wife to go explore some of the abandoned quarry tunnels, also known as the catacombs under Paris, uh, to access it. I made contact with a local cataphile, they call them, and you pop this 100 kilogram manhole cover on the side of the street, climb down 100 feet. Uh, there's some obstacles you have to get past, including you know bricked up walls that have tiny holes that you have to crawl through and flooded sections. Parts of it are graveyards. I mean, it's, it's an absolutely wonderful experience and one that I'll never forget. Right now I'm shooting with a beautiful Hasselblad camera. Uh, it's a medium format film camera. It doesn't have a light meter or a timed exposure on it, uh, timed long exposure. So I've got a light meter that I've got to use to find out how long to depress the shutter for and two, three, and get the shots. What I love about using this camera is the size of the negative is absolutely enormous compared to 35 millimeter compared to digital and the quality of the image is just that much better as a result. One great location that um, I got access to was uh, an old psychiatric hospital. Uh, happened to be a, a very thick fog that morning, which was perfect for, uh, for a stealthy access into the building and, and made for some nice diffused light once we got up onto the roof. And uh, I've also got a wonderful shot from inside as well, which shows uh, quite a bit of the decay and what uh, basically happens to a building that sits for about 20 years. Some of the details that we like to photograph uh, in these buildings are, uh, you know, walls with layers and layers of peeling paint. They create uh, color patterns that were never there before when the buildings were in use and textures that were never there before. Um, we look for artifacts and evidence of past human use of these buildings. Uh, in psychiatric hospitals, sometimes you come across patient records or, you know, beds and wheelchairs and uh, anything that gives evidence to its past use is just excellent to find. My head did touch the, uh, the board. Though. Oh, you mean the, uh, the nail, the rusty nail that was sticking out of the board? That's the one. Excellent. Well, I do have wet naps. <laughs> you should probably use one. <laughs> At least to get rid of the blood streak that's now on your head. You have had your tetanus shots? That's good. I don't remember the last time I had mine, so I may be dead by the time this airs. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> One of the fun things about this hobby is that you never know what you're going to find when you set out from the day. In this case, I've never actually been down in this tunnel, so you can see the, uh, the tracks along the ground. The bricks would be on the carts ready to go out to the trains. Surprisingly, no graffiti in this tunnel. Oh, wow, this is great. They must have just shut down operation before they could ship out. Man, these are wonderful. What a great find. Uh, the film that I have in this camera is uh, a bit low sensitivity, so to take a shot without natural light, uh, it would probably be about a half hour exposure or so. So uh, Matt's just going to uh, grab a shot uh, before we head on to the rest of the facility. 30 second exposure, F4. One thing I love about the digital medium is that the ability to uh, control the entire process from start to finish. This little bridge here has a special uh, meaning for my wife and I. Uh, before we got married recently, we came here to uh, shoot uh, some of our pre-wedding photos, and uh, we've got a nice shot of the two of us sitting on this bridge. We found an old vaudeville theater, ballrooms, old high schools. I mean, there's just, there's so many different types of buildings out there. There's, there's always something new to find and new to explore. What I love about this spot here at the, uh, at the Brickworks is the, all these uh, pipes over the cooling tunnels uh, converging. It gives this great uh, sense of depth, and uh, they remind me of the, uh, the creature and alien that latched onto that guy's face. 
pretty cool. When people see our photography, they want to know why we are interested in this uh, type of material. Uh, some, some find it very interesting, some find it just ugly and, uh, and shameful, uh, but we find that there is beauty in the decay and we try and express that through our photography and bring it out and show people that, uh, that there's some amazing sights behind the boarding if you just look for it. is not steady at all. It's like a roller coaster. It just goes up and down and some months you're, you know, you're eating at the Royal York and some months you're lifting the sofa looking for change to buy lunch with. I'm a commercial photographer, but what I do tends to go a little deeper into it than that. It comes back to this narrative aspect. There's so much advertising and so much bombardment of people by visual media that you essentially have to give something back to people. And I find what you give back to them through my work, what I give back to them through my work is a sense of story. And that enables me to to sell something to a client where people are looking at my images a lot longer than they normally would because it's not just a flagrant product push. It's, a, it's like a little story and it kind of invites you in. And to me, I think this has a huge future because it's sort of a new way of graphic and visual communication. And it allows you to enter a world and opens up windows on a world that ordinarily you'd never see. Let's do it. Okay, we got this. We're really privileged to have Dan Trudeau attend our event today for our Chrome Hearts collection. It's going to be phenomenal with him doing our photo shoot. I can't wait to see how everything turns out. It's going to be great. So what we're going to do tonight is shoot what's called a live editorial. And basically we're going to go out there with a bunch of models by shark bait and just chum the waters and see what's going to happen with the crowd interacting with the models and uh, hopefully it's going to sort of build up an energy that you normally wouldn't get out of a shoot. And we'll just see what's going to happen. Give me less power. Basically today we're going to be shooting um, the dysfunctional zombie family in the auto wrecking yard. Instead of emulating what everybody else is doing, you want to do something that's just brand new. And you don't see many zombies in advertising. So technically what we're doing today too is we're bringing a lot of strobe, which is like electronic flash outside with us. And that enables me to take the sky and essentially dial it down. And I can fully control the lighting on the people. They're gonna be gelled blue here for fill light and the direction of the main light has nothing to do with what's happening outside. And it makes for some interesting setups because we'd never be able to haul a truck like this into the studio, let alone some of the other wonders we're going to be seeing over the course of the day. The people have to be positioned very carefully and the flash relative to them so that even if they move around a little, I'm still going to get the same effect because I'm essentially guessing what that light's doing to them. Here we go. Okay, let's get that smoke happening. Good. That looks great. I'm the kind of person who believes in what I call an uh, environment of controlled chaos. I don't like to be too controlling, but I like to be very demanding. I like to have the very best people involved with the shoot and then let them run with it. Casting as well is absolutely key. Like, as you'll probably see from the people today, each of them is playing a certain role and each of them, to me, fits that part almost perfectly. Commercial photography is a very fickle marketplace, and how you stay on top of that, how you stay current, and how you make sure the marketplace never regards you as being passe is by frankly not worrying about what the marketplace is thinking about. 
A shoot like today is a really good example. There is no commercial outlet for zombies. They're not selling RSPs and, uh, or cosmetics for that matter. But if someone sees that you've taken something and put a new slant on it, they'll think and understand that you're the type of person who has ideas, who can bring things to the table when they present you with something that's inherently boring or it's been done a lot of times. One of the most interesting experiences I had was I decided to shoot a, a take on James Bond, but use two girls and call it Jane Bond. This turned out to be one of the most popular things that I ever shot. And a client in Texas basically asked me to reproduce the entire project down to the same models, same angles, same locations, and they paid me uh, six figures to do it. So it was uh, an extremely gratifying experience. I find myself working with people who are, I guess for want of a better word, this sounds really weird, but they're like fans. And the people who sometimes give me a job that has absolutely nothing to do with my portfolio, just the different, some of the different things that I've done, and um, they just want to have a chance to, to work with me. You got that went really, really well. Oh my yeah. god, I never knew so many people had cameras and cell phone cameras. Do you want to they all bring their cameras up to these events, who knew? Another series that I did was all based on this film called Shark Water, and I turned it into a series of oil paintings, and I titled the piece The World of Finance. and I can be extremely extroverted when I'm around people. And then when I get into a mood, I can be really introverted and I need to be alone to really think about what it is that I want to do. And I like to spend time alone. I've explored different subject matter, but I think painting females is my favorite. I adore really strong women, and I always have. And so I have about six females that I have in mind who exhibit a really strong animal characteristic. And so I want them to be nude and just staring straight into the camera. And so you can really read their eyes. And then I want to try to morph them into whatever animal is their predominant characteristic. For example, I have one woman that I met and uh, she walks into the room and she just is so full of energy that she just dominates the room and she's so friendly and beautiful and high energy that just everybody, males and females, just everybody wants to look at her and listen to her and talk to her and stuff. And so she reminded me of uh, a peacock and how they're so bright and colorful and dominating, so I thought that she would be a perfect fit as a peacock. I have another female who is very sly and kind of sexy and has these kind of hunter survival instincts and she's been through many things in her life and she always kind of survives but it's given her kind of a, a street smart and so I'm gonna have you pose where you look just straight into the camera and then I'm gonna have you show in your eyes a hunter kind of an instinct, okay? I don't want to make them too strongly reminiscent of the animal, so I'm just going to mainly play with their eyes to make it look like the animal, and their arms, I'm going to have it take on the scales or the fur or the feathers or whatever the animal is, and it's going to be shot from their waist up, and they're going to be nude, and I want them to be staring directly into the camera, and then another shot with them staring kind of off into the distance. I wanted to have it just a really strong contrast just from one angle all the way down. Typically, I'm the one that takes the photographs of the models, 
but I've chosen to use a professional photographer this time so that I can work one-on-one -on -one with the models and achieve the look that I want because in the past I found that uh, I wish I was able to step back from the scene and evaluate how it was the overall image was looking and now uh, having somebody to take the photographs will give me that opportunity. I use photography as a tool because I really receive a lot of satisfaction from super high realism. I've painted from imagination before and from live models sitting and it's very expressive and free and I really enjoy the process of doing the paintings but I get a greater satisfaction from the completed image when I graph out a photograph and then blow it up into a painting. I just like the way it frames up her face a little bit more. Then this one, I don't find it as flattering to her face. But I guess like the end result is closer to the high contrast, yes. but we might need more to work with, which yeah. is your call. Sounds good. It can be difficult to keep nudity tasteful because it's so easy to cross the line and make it erotic. I try to think of them as these beautiful muses that I'm just so inspired by and they're so gracious. And I think of them as ballerinas and they are just there to inspire and I think it comes across in the way that I pose them so it's a little bit of a give and take I come with an idea of what I want and then we just kind of play around and explore until we're both comfortable with it it's going really great I'm really happy with the results so far I think we probably got the shot so far but we're still just playing around with getting a little bit more animalistic and so by doing so we're getting into poses where it gets a little bit too much light right here, so we have to find a way to soften it up and still having it primal. So that's where we are right now. The most significant piece that I've done was of September 11th. I photographed the event as it was happening um, from my rooftop, and it was just such a traumatic day that it, it's just burned into everybody's mind. And so from that moment on, I carried around this idea of this painting, of this drawing for about two years, and I wanted to get it out of my system, but I just, I didn't know how to do it. And then all of a sudden, in one night, I made a 10 foot by four foot mixed media piece of the attacks, the towers made out of newspaper articles on war and terrorism, because I became very obsessed with the news after the attacks, and so I felt it really encompassed all that that experience was for me. This is Erica, and she's going to be a peacock. Okay, so I want one where you're just hard enough. Yeah. Can you switch that now? Put the other arm up. Yeah. And then turn a little bit more towards this way. After we take the photographs today, then we're going to be working with them on Photoshop and manipulating the image. And that should just take about a week or so to get all the girls into their animals. And then from that point on, I have to graph them out, put them onto six by four foot canvases, and that should take about a month per painting. So I'm looking about six months for a six painting series. I've tried experimenting with being abstract and really making things gritty and dirty. And it's cool, but it's just, it's not my strength. And so I think I'll always stay with things that are flattering, beautiful, feminist, nudity, and oil painting.